I'm here at the National Federation of Community Broadcasters Radio Conference in Houston, Texas with Marge Kalama. She's a producer and announcer with KWSO in Warm Springs, Oregon. Hi, Marge. Great to meet you. Hello. It's good to be here, and I'm glad you're Hello. talking with me. Well, thank you. And so, talk a little bit about the state of Native radio. You are involved with a tribal radio station in Warm Springs. Well, actually, we're doing really good in our Native radio in KWSO and in our region. We have um, Umatilla Radio and a Yakima radio station. We collaborate with those two. And then Kiwanek Radio, which is one of our information sources, Native America Calling and Native Voice One and, and the Native News. And as we were here in this conference, I would like to encourage um, people who listen to Native Radio to keep listening to Native News because we do have a vote that we want to work on and have our people, our youth mostly, recognize the vote is important. How big is your reservation? Our reservation is uh, 167 um, square miles mm -hmm. and we have like 3,000 enrolled members. Uh, and our half our youth, our half our population are under 30. Wow. And we're, so we're trying to get them out. We bear, we we pass votes, but it, we lack passage because voter turnout um, is low. Yeah, mm. we lack voter turnout. That, that seems to be the case across the country. I just met a few guys from Baltimore who said their recent election was, was it a 15 or 20 percent turnout? Mm -hmm. Really bad. We just had an election in San Francisco, bad turnout. Mm. What are the youth on your tribe talking about? What really concerns them? What are some of the stories they want to tell? I believe that the youth are talking about, unfortunately, they, they don't know how much longer they're going to live. That's what they talk about. What do you mean? Well, I had a little 10-year-old who said, I don't think I'm going to make it to any to 20. What? They don't think they're going to make it to 20. Why? Because there's so much different... Um, there's murders and there's um, car accidents and and they're just not sure if if there's going to be anybody to take care of them I think or something but that's what I wanted to let them know is if you vote when you vote when you participate you can control your future you don't have to put it in anybody else's hands we can work with this together but that's you know something we'd be working together and it did it did sadden me that's and really I, sad to think that these young people young, don't think they're, they're gonna not live even very 18 long. yet they already think they're they're not going to make it Wow. Is, is there any organizations on the tribe that can help these kids and talk to them about why they feel like this and just to sort of air their views? Oh, our whole reservation has a kind of, kind of that feeling. Mm. You know, there are some people who are doing really good, but the major part of them have, um, I'm not going to make it there, you know, I'm not going to make it there. So I think I looked at the kids and go, don't say that. You will make it there, and that's what we need to do. You know, more of us need to tell our kids, you will make it. I'll be here, you know. I told them, as long as I'm here, I'll be 80 years old. You guys come and talk to me, and I'll encourage you to make it. Well, what are their prospects for the future? I mean, what, what's the unemployment rate? What are the job prospects? Oh, yeah, it's bad. It's, it's bad, yeah. <laughs> but we do have, you know, there are opportunities. And, and the kids are working. And the men, they used to be loggers. We, we have resources. But because of those resources are dwindling, our men folk are becoming, um, they don't want to work in the office. But now, today, they're starting to say, yeah, I have to work in the office. I have to work and do other things outside of the, in the forest industry. And see, we live that way, our, a lot of our men live that way, and they didn't have an alternative. But now we're, um, we're fighting for our educated kids that come back to the reservation. We're going to fight and let make, make our organization recognize their knowledge that they went out, obtained, and are trying to bring back to us. Right. And, and when I get back, that's one of my goals, is to make sure our young kids coming back from college have a job, you know. So that way, the kids will be encouraged to continue their education, right. and and not say, "I'm not going to make it past 20 or 18." Mm. You know. What would you? What do you want people to know about just your everyday issues and what you're facing on your tribe? We were just talking earlier about how Native Americans are often stereotyped in the media. When 2020 comes to town, it's always about poverty and alcoholism, and sure. Those are huge issues, but there's a lot more, and, and they don't tend to go past those 
issues to talk to the young people maybe about what, how are you organizing or what's exciting you or mm -hmm. what else is there about your reservation and your tribe? Well, in our tribe, we usually really do like baseball is like right now is the big thing and basketball is the big thing. Our kids are, um, we have t-ball, you know, minor leagues and all that and all our kids just flock to that and they enjoy that kind of collaboration with each other mm -hmm. and adults and our, our kids really are, are they come together and they and but they have a limit you know it's because of lack of gas mm -hmm. you know those kinds of funding th sources and but we have a community center and I work with them I volunteer at the community center and we just try to bring the kids together mm -hmm. and they all sit we give them a little snack and we all laugh they, go, they come back can we have seconds you know and so we just sit with them and help them every way you can and and I work with a lot of um, homeless people too mm -hmm. and there we have homeless people and we just try to help them also we're going to try and do a shoe drive that's one of because the, oh. they walk everywhere they go and you, oh. and they call the road warriors the you road, warriors. <clears throat> road warriors how, how, what's the homeless population oh i'd say about 10 percent for sure that's high for mm -hmm. that, that and the, the population is... well it's homeless because of our housing issues so. right mm -hmm. And people do live, we all live with each other, you know, that just, you just can't avoid that. Right. So um, if you don't, if you bring people home once in a while so they can shower and watch TV with you once in a while. And that's what we do. We try to go and pick some friends up and say, come on, let's go watch TV. <laughs> and, and, and so the road, road warriors, they sleep on the streets? I, no, my my brother has a house that, and he's single, and that seems to be where they go. So, so they sleep at his place, and then during the day they wander around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the shoe drive. The shoe drive. Well, I've noticed that the people have the same shoes year after year, and I said we need a shoe drive because in our population we have both. Um, aspects of economy and so I think I know I can get a bunch of shoes from half the other half of the res who has you know had the jobs that are generated by our organization and so if we could um, get those shoes and bring them to the homeless and and we do we have people within our our reservation who help each other and that's what we're taught the hard things is is the government you know I mean we're like all cities we're just a little bit smaller mm -hmm. you know and we all know each other and there's no leaving the res and you can leave but I've I've never lived off of a reservation all my life I've always lived on a reservation I moved to Canada I lived on a res there and and so that's and you'll never leave the res I probably never leave the res sounds like they you they really need you you're really doing amazing work there <laughs> if, if people want to donate shoes or maybe learn more about this program how can we find it Find them information. Well, it's a grassroots program, uh -huh. and I suggest it, that they have shoes, donate to their homeless. Yeah, you're, okay? that's true. You it's, it, it wouldn't make sense really just to yeah. mail a pair of shoes across the country because there's so much need in all of our backyards. Oh, yes. Mm. All of our backyards. Oh, yeah. Help each other. Yeah. And donate to your homeless. Donate to your children. Stay stay with your kids, even kids you don't know, because mm. they do need somebody to... Um, look into their eyes so true know. they need a connection mm -hmm. they really need connection mm -hmm. and face-to-face -face offline I should say connection are there many computers on the res Is, are people online or we did have a, a, a um, computer area but some okay it depends on the fat what family um, structure and income right. you're in right yeah of course yeah are most people disconnected? Yeah, yeah, most people are disconnected. Yeah. You know, it's so important for us to realize that not everybody's online. Oh, yeah. Not everybody has a computer. And not everybody has a radio. Uh huh. And so that's what they say. We're, we're thinking of buying radios to give to the people who don't have wow. radios. Right, so then they can be connected to something, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, Marge, thank you so much for talking with me. It was great to meet you. Marge Kalama is producer and announcer at KWSO in Warm Springs, Oregon, and we're here at the National Federation of Community Broadcasters Radio Conference in Houston, Texas. And you brought your cowboy hat because you came to Houston. Thank you, Marge. You're welcome.